Hello everybody and welcome back to my The Motion Recreation. And this is the episode, the crucial one, where we will get the crew to Duna. But first we have to get some small surprise up to the Hermes. What may it be? There it is. But well, this is just basically the vessel for the real surprise. What it is, I'm going to show you later when we're on the surface of Duna. Okay, setting up a rendezvous with the Hermes. There we go, we're already there. Thanks to the magic of video editing. Okay, so we have a cargo bay on that big ship, but it's mounted sideways because... reasons? And I decided to use that to put that little, well, barge, dingy thing inside there and it fits very snugly and it looks, well, weird but somehow great. I don't know, just my opinion. Okay now, beautiful shot there against the sunlight and now we already set our maneuver node, we've of course skipped a few days into the future. And now we're going to fire our engines. There we go. And yes, we are now officially on our way to start our journey to Duna. Okay, this is going to take a while because nuclear engines take a lot of time to perform their burns, but they are very efficient. So yeah, there you go. And boom, we're already almost out of the sphere of in well, we're already out of the sphere of influence of Kerbin regarding our orbit, but we're not yet where we want to go. So we want to have an encounter with Duna, of course, and I'm trying to adjust this very carefully, but we're not near there yet. There we go. We have our encounter, but it's very far away from the planet, and I think we can do better and adjust that. Yeah, this is better, but I think we have to set up a new maneuver node once we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence, which we did. And now we're going to execute it. Okay, so, oh, I really hope they fixed that with Kerbal Space Program 1.1. I so much hated those orbit lines wiggling around and flipping somewhere if they're very far into the future. And of course, even more so when the calculated periaps completely changes to the one that you really have once you arrive at the planet. Okay, now time again to skip forward and we're here. Look at that, that red dot in the background is Duna, the red planet of the Kerbal system. And we're of course adjusting our periaps so we can get an aero braking maneuver going on. Some beautiful backdrop with Ike there. Of course Ike, the singular moon of Duna. Mars of course, the real red planet so to speak, does have two moons that we know of or that I know of, and maybe there are more. But the ones I know of, Phobos and Deimos, they're of course, well, not just one, as Duna here has. And yeah, my trajectories mod kind of, well, it lied to me. It said I would get an error breaking encounter and then circularize around the planet, but I did not. So yeah, I have to use my engines as well, so I can get my stable orbit around Duna. And I also use some error breaks that you can see up top. They're actually, well, intended for something completely different, but they, well, they work in this regard as well, so why not use them? Okay, you can see the trajectories mod here jumping around all over the place, so it's basically just some kind of, I don't know, nice suggestion, I guess, but not really a valid calculator of how your orbit will be. For instance, I now once again have to use my engines to get the stable orbit going, there we go. 
I have read that if you're using Ferrum Aerospace Research that this will be a lot more precise in its prediction. But we got our stable orbit and we have to do some more passes until we arrive at this juncture, which is transferring the pilots to the spacecraft. Okay, we have to, of course, well, they're already in the spacecraft, but transferring them to the descent vehicle. Of course, we have to do that one by one because you can't transfer kerbals from a pod to a command seed which is fine by me. So everyone gets an EVA and they get to take a seat in that small service bay which houses our six command seats. Okay. Jebediah, Bob, Bill, Valentina, Bark and Asina Kerman are the brave crew of the Hermes. There we go, we have cleared the spaceship and we're now headed towards the surface of Duna. Well, not yet, of course, we have to perform a maneuver node once again. And with this maneuver, I'm going to try to aim so I hit the surface at the right spot, the right spot being very close to the base. And this is a lot trickier with planets that have atmospheres. Because if you don't have an atmosphere, you just aim your maneuver node, you see where your uh, orbit will end inside the planet and then you can kind of eyeball where you're going to go. But with those pesky little atmospheres, you have the problem that those slow your vehicle down and redirect you and whatnot and yeah. So basically your orbit ends up completely somewhere else where you set the maneuver node in the first place. But we are already in viewing distance of our habitat. But I'm afraid this is not going to put the MDV into close proximity of it. It's almost 10 kilometers away. Hmm. Oh well. I think a rover could make the journey to pick them up. Now well, let's see. Let's put that to the test. Okay, maybe trying to adjust our trajectory a bit. That's not working. Okay, time to land. I hope I have enough fuel for a descent burn. And... Oh well, just the engine lost. No worries. Everything looks okay. Oh, now that's an idea. Maybe I can roll this thing up until I'm at the habitat. Can I roll you? Please let me roll you. Okay, anybody else reminded of that old Limp Biscuit song? Rolling, 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 keep rolling, 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 rolling. Flipping rather than rolling. Okay, we're losing air brakes left and right. Well, let's try it this way. Just flipping around, I'm trying to use the flips induced by the service bay doors and not the reaction wheel, so I won't lose as much energy. But yeah, that plan is now a failure. Okay, now let's get out of there. Come on, guys, stretch your legs. Get out of there. Who's next? Jebediah. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Jebediah Kerman. He's such a badass. Okay. Where is he at? He's about, he flew about 200 meters somewhere, but right into the direction of the habitat, I might add. So that's a plus, I guess. Okay, let's get that rover over there. Thanks to my planning, we still have a probe core on there, so we can steer the rover to the Kerbals. Yeah. Okay, let's get this going, unlock the steering, because I've locked the steering back when I transported those base parts that you can see in the background. Okay, now moving over there and of course skipping across many minutes of tedious rovering. Hey Jeb! I have to be careful that I don't mow him over, but it's Jebediah Kerman. He'd survive that. Okay, Jeb of course taking the main entrance to the rover. Transferring to the front. Now let's ditch that thing. 
We now don't need the extra weight because we now have a pilot. Okay, hi guys. Nice little power slide you did there, Jab. Always trying to impress the girls, aren't you? But you see, Commander Valentina and Specialist Asina are not very impressed by your driving. And also we would like to make a nice little... Well, of course we have to repair the wheels. Since we were crammed into that spaceship, the Hermes, for so many days, let's just make a convertible trip now. Okay... The top is open, the crew is assembled, and let's have a joyride. Whoops! Okay. It appears that Kerbals don't have good traction. Ouch! Uh, well, I don't think this mission is going according to plan very much. Oh, and we lost somebody. Okay. Joyride's over, now get into that crew module. Okay, we have one crew module up front, then we have uh, space for five kerbals in the front, and yeah, one has to scooch into the entrance. Or maybe just hang on to the leather. Now that would make for a great action movie. Yeah! Okay, now let's get inside and have a safe trip home. There is enough. Well, enough hullabaloo for one episode, I guess. Okay, skip the head once more, so you don't have to see me rovering for minutes across the surface. And there it is, there is home, at least for the next weeks or months, until we can head back to the Hermes and then of course head back to Kerbin, all six of course, as is the plan. But will they? Hmm, let's find out. But first we have to dock the rover again to the habitat. There we go, and now it's time to check out the new digs! Okay, transferring all of the crew. Everyone can get a separate compartment, so they don't have to step on each other's toes now. Okay, now that's fine. Let's get rid of the other module up there, so we don't have the extra weight over there. Goodbye. I said goodbye. Okay, there it flies. Let's see if we can get this thing fast enough into the ground so nothing survives. I don't want to have any debris lying around. Boom! Okay. Place your bets. Will this explode or won't it explode? Yes, it does. Okay now, checking out the interior. Spacious comfort for six curls. Perfect. Okay. Now, back to my surprise. There it is, and now it's time to get this thing down to the surface. Okay, let's get out of the cargo bay. Once again, beautiful scenery. Oh, I love space. Okay, now, let's unfold that antenna. Of course, the antenna is needed for communications relay between the surface of Duna and, of course, Kerbin Space Center. Since this surprise carrier has a lot more Delta V than the MDV, I can just, well, put it almost on top of the habitat and then burn off almost of our orbital velocity. Oh, we overshot a bit. Well, still enough delta V to correct that. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, now coming in, we're into the atmosphere already. Closing in, this is looking good. Well, we're not landing right on top of it, but we're going to be very close, so yeah. Okay, parachutes are already open, at least the drogue chutes. Now we're going to open the main chutes, there we go. Oh, this is going to be a smooth landing, because once more, again, we have a lot of delta V left for slowing us down. Hmm, I wonder if we can try to land this thing directly on the docking port and it not falling over. Yes! 
We've placed a monolith on Duna. Well, not exactly. You're going to see what's in there in a future episode. Okay, now, first things first. The most important thing, of course, for getting... Well, for getting any successful space mission done is getting back home. So in order to do that, Jebediah, the pilot, is of course going to inspect the ascent vehicle. But before he can do that, Bill had to repair one of the rover's wheels. There we go. Done. Okay, the MAV, or in this case DAV, Luna Ascent Vehicle, not Mars Ascent Vehicle. But I think MAV sounds kind of cooler than DAV. Sounds like... Somebody tried to write Dave and omitted the E. Okay, there we go. This is the Ascent Vehicle. At least one of them. The second one for the Ares 4 mission has landed... Well, while the Hermes was on approach. I forgot to record that, sorry about that. But you've seen the descent of the first... Ascent vehicle, the descent of the ascent vehicle, yeah. And the other one was not different from it at all, so there's no need to show it to you. Okay, time to expect, inspect this thing. Ladders out, compartment open, getting in there. Okay, Jebediah sitting in the pilot seat. Examining all the instruments, everything looking fine, except for how to exit this vehicle. Always popping up somewhere when you exit the command seats. But the advantage of that is we can just fly over to the cockpit hatch. Okay, ascent vehicle now almost ready, just a few tiny drops of fuel left to produce until the crew can get back home. And yes, getting back home is, of course, the most important part of any space mission. So, this one here is now home at the habitat, or the temporary home, the home away from home. So, what's going to happen in the next episode? Stay tuned to find out. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.